before, and I'm going to ask them to be sure they have the PowerPoint ready called the Bloodline of the Antichrist. And we're going to get into some things there. If you have a Bible, go to 1 John chapter 2, if you will, please. 1 John chapter 2. And uh, make sure everything's okay in the back, guys. Is it good? Thank you. 1 John chapter 2. Where did the term Antichrist come from? Who did it originate with and what does it mean? The Apostle John, according to scholars, coined a brand new term that had never been used before until it was written in 1 John's epistle. And it is the term Antichrist as it's translated in English. 1 John chapter 2.18 says this, Little children, it is the last hour, and as you have heard that the Antichrist is coming, even now many Antichrists have come, by which we know that it is the last hour. In the uh, Greek language, there is a definite article pointing to a definite person, the. That's why I have a the there. They did, some translations say you've heard that Antichrist is coming, but in Greek it reads the Antichrist is coming. That means a specific person. A specific, a definite article in Greek points to a specific thing, a detailed thing. Now in chapter 2, verses 22 and 23, there's a verse that says this, Who is a liar but he that denies that Jesus is the Christ? He is Antichrist who denies the Father and the Son. In the same book, 1 John chapter 4, verses 2 and 3, Every spirit that does not confess that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is not of God. And this is the spirit of the Antichrist which you uh, have heard was coming and is now already in the world. When people read this, it can be a little confusing just by taking those three verses because it sounds like he's saying that the Antichrist was already there. Preterous to our people that believe that prophecy has already been fulfilled, that there's no rapture and there's no signs, that it all happened by 70 AD. They'll take this verse and they'll say, well, he said the Antichrist is already here. It was probably Emperor Nero, who the early church, some of them believed was the Antichrist. Well, if you look at this, there's two things that's clear. Number one, he says that the spirit of Antichrist is already there and already working. There were people in Paul's day, when he, I'm sorry, John's day when he wrote this, that were denying that Jesus was the Son of God. They were denying his divinity and his deity. So therefore, the spirit of Antichrist was already working through some of the sects and groups of people that existed back then. However, because he uses the definite article, the, in, in uh, some of these passages, it is clear that he is saying there is a person who is coming and one of the key features of this person will be how he treats Jesus. what he says about Jesus. He will say he's not the Son of God, and he will deny any relationship between Father and Son. Now, you know when you say Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, that's Trinity. That's an English word for the triunity of God, or what Paul called the Godhead. The
are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Spirit. We know who the Word is. It's Jesus, based on uh, John, St. John, where he says, in the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, the Word was God, the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us. That's Jesus. So there are three that bear record in heaven. Now, the spirit of Antichrist, therefore, would be a spirit that would say there is no triunity of God, and number two would say that Jesus is not the Son of God. Now, of all religions in the world that exist that absolutely deny any form of the Trinity of God and that deny that He is the Son of God, the premier religion that has over 1.4 billion people in it is Islam. If you were to talk to a Muslim, you would find out, if they're moderate, that they would say that Christianity and Islam are closely connected. We believe in the same God. 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 the God of Abraham. They believe in the Torah. They believe in the Psalms and the four Gospels. The only thing is they believe that our translation of the Bible has been changed by the Jews, that it's not the real translation, that the Quran has the original uh, version in it. Uh, but they would also say that you believe in fasting, we believe in fasting, you believe in praying, we believe in praying, you believe in tithing or charity and offerings, we believe in tithing, charity and offerings, you believe in angels, we believe in angels, you believe in judgment, we believe in judgment, you believe in hell, we believe in hell. You believe in paradise. We believe in paradise. And I've heard him go down the list and I'd say, interesting, interesting, interesting. Wow, interesting. Wow, we really do believe a lot of the same thing. Then I'd say this, what do you think about Jesus? What do you think about Jesus? <laughs> you got that song, don't you? <clears throat> when we get to Jesus, here's what happens. There's a whole change. I would say Jesus was conceived of the Holy Spirit through Mary. They would say, the Quran says that. I would say that he was born through the Holy Spirit supernaturally. The Quran says that. I would say he's the Son of God. Hold it. That's where it stops. Because they do not believe that Allah or God, that Allah or God, that Allah or God, that Allah or God, that Allah or God has a son. That he is not begotten, nor does he begot. Therefore, Jesus was never the son of God. He is equal to one of the 27 great prophets that Islam calls the great prophets, including Abraham, Moses, David, etc.